good morning dear brothers and sisters and friends greetings in the name of the lord jesus christ this is the passion week and we have been looking into the events that happened in the life and ministry of the lord jesus christ during this last week of his life here on earth we have seen the event that happened on sunday which was palm sunday we also saw what happened on monday and tuesday and wednesday this comparatively we silent day uh, nothing special happened and on thursday the most important event was passover supper and the inauguration of uh, holy communion for the new testament church to observe and after thursday after inaugurating uh, the lord's supper or communion jesus left with the disciples and arrived at gethsemane the garden where jesus prayed it's the last time in the garden the route they took to arrive at gethsemane must have been a, a route by the side of which there must have been a vineyard and using the the vine and its branches he gave his last discourse to his disciples before he went to the cross which is re recorded in uh, the gospel according to st john chapters 14 15 and 16 and in chapter 7 he prayed for the disciples and for others who would believe in him and this was so because he saw his disciples who were saddened at the revelation he gave to them that he was going to Jerusalem where he will be arrested and then tried and then persecuted and tortured and be crucified and then on the third day he would rise again in Gethsemane what happened most importantly was his prayer before he went to the cross this action of Jesus is an example of what believers must do in times of great distress and grief. Of course, Jesus was entering into the final moments of this cosmic battle between God and the devil. And all the evil and demonic forces now come together in order to make the battle as severe as possible. And this is a very good example for us to follow. Our battles are nothing compared to the battle in which Jesus was engaged. Once in his prayer, he even said, my soul is so troubled to the point of death. battle in prayer was so intense that the sweat fell on the ground appeared to be mingled with blood from the veins of Jesus's body ours may not be that intense Nevertheless, we learn four lessons from this action of Jesus. When his entire being was engaged in the final phase of this battle, before he went to the cross, the ultimate 
goal of his coming into this world. He spent Thursday night in prayer. So what are the four lessons we can learn from this action of Jesus Christ? And if we apply it in our life sincerely, by the grace of God and by the aid of uh, the Holy Spirit in helping us to pray, the number one lesson we learn is turn to God in prayer in times of our greatest need in times of conflicts in our own life and this we find in the gospel according to St. Mark chapter 14 verses 32 and then verses 35 and 36 and also 39 turn to God in prayer we do not have a strength to face our Goliath. We do not have the wisdom to handle the pressures of life and especially the conflicts and the terrible moments. As we are facing these days, we all are shut in. The whole world is, seems, is, is, is paralyzed because of one almost invisible virus. And what can we do? No one can stop it. And sometimes we even do not know what to pray or how to pray. But the Holy Spirit is there to help us even in prayer. So never hesitate to turn to God in prayer when we are facing terrible uh, conflicts in our spiritual life and the number two lesson is seek the support of friends again gospel of mark chapter 14 verses 33 and 34 and then 42 here what we see is jesus as we began to pray before he went to prayer he left these three disciples at a spot asking them to be awakened and pray and watch and pray first time he went to pray and he prayed for some time and he returned to his disciples and what he saw was they were so tired they were sleeping and Jesus immediately told them friends you are still sleeping watch and pray lest you may enter into temptation. You need to pray. And then he went again to pray. The agonized prayer of Jesus was so intense that his sweat was mingled with the blood that oozed out of the veins of his body. And it appeared to be blood. The burden and the conflict was so intense. And my friends, as I said, our conflicts and our battles may not be as intense and terrible as uh, Jesus. But nevertheless, in our own um, strength and in our own uh, wisdom, we may not be able to handle what we are facing. So what is to be done? We must never hesitate to seek the support of our friends. Never alienate ourselves from people who love the Lord and who believe in prayer and who seek the Lord. This was one mistake that Thomas and the disciples made. Remember, it seems that when first time Jesus appeared to the disciples after his resurrection, Thomas was absent. 
And Thomas was informed by these disciples who were present, hey, Jesus is risen, he is alive. And Thomas refused to believe. Though these disciples have seen Jesus and they told him so, and yet he found it very difficult to believe. He became so weak in his faith, even to believe the eyewitnesses. What was his reason? He absented himself. He alienated himself for even from his friends. And it took another appearance of Jesus, where Jesus invited Thomas to come and feel him and see the, the, the nail marks on his hands and, 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 and also the spear mark uh, by his side. I do not know whether he actually put his finger into the holes. Maybe he may, it may be he has done it or he may not have. But seeing Jesus and hearing him speaking to him convinced him so much that he knelt down and he just uttered three words, my God and my Lord. In that confession, his repentance was there and his conviction was there and his complete surrender and dedication to the Lordship of Jesus was there. And then of course he became a martyr for Jesus Christ. It is believed that it was he who brought the gospel to India. Never alienate ourselves from the fellow believers from people who believe in prayer, people who have experienced God's wonderful answers to prayer. Seek the Lord and at the same time, seek the support and the prayer of our fellow believers. And number three, affirm in your heart that God is your heavenly Father who cares for you. This is expressed very clearly in the Mark's Gospel, chapter 14, verse 36. As I give you these references, make sure that write it down and read these references to support uh, the points, that uh, the lessons that I am telling you. Who is God to us? He is our Heavenly Father more than anything else. He is, of course, the Almighty God. He lives in an unapproachable light. He, he, he fills the heavens and the earth. The Bible says he's so great that even the heaven of heavens cannot contain him. Holy. And yet this same God, the creator God and sustainer God, the almighty God, he has presented himself to us as our father in heaven. This is the relationship. And it is Jesus Christ who uh, introduced and projected God Almighty to be our Father. So when he taught his disciples to pray, this is the way he began his prayer. Our Father in heaven. So there is now a possibility of a human being to establish a personal relationship with God in such an intimate way that it becomes a father-son relationship. Very precious and very dear. And so always remember, God is not someone who is very far away from you and you are trying to reach him and the many time you doubt whether he is listening or is he interested in me. No, my friends, never doubt the Father's love for you. Remember it is our Heavenly Father who loved the world so much that he gave his one and only begotten Son, Jesus Christ. And Jesus Christ, of course, took that love of God the Father and made it his own love for us. So here is the fact. It is God the Father who loved us. And it is that love 
that took Jesus the son onto the cross and when he was on the cross a short period of time the father actually rejected him so the cry of God the son Jesus father why have you forsaken me why Jesus was forsaken by God the father for our sake for your sake and Apostle Paul put it in a beautiful way when he said if God was not willing to withhold his own son but release him for our sake will he not to give us anything else oh yes never doubt the father's love for you and never doubt this relationship if you maintain it sustain it by your commitment and your, your, your relationship. Make it deeper and deeper every day by the word of God and by the power of the Holy Spirit and by your own love. And lastly, trust God and commit yourself to his will. Verse 36 again. Remember, he had a human will. It was that human will that cried out in the garden of Gethsemane. Father, if it is possible, this cup is too bitter for me. Remove it from me. But nevertheless, it is not my will, but your will be done. What did he do with this human will? He surrendered it to his father's will. And what was the Father's will for him? The cross. And Jesus did not hesitate to surrender his own will to God's will, the Father's will, and go to the cross. See his love? God the Father loves you. God the Son loved you and loves you still. And the blessed Holy Spirit makes Jesus very precious to all of us. So the triune union, the, the, all three persons in the Godhead, the Holy Godhead is involved in our salvation. This God is your God and Father forevermore. Take courage, have the confidence and uh, trust God. Never doubt. He cares. That's why the Peter say, cast all your burdens on him because he cares for you. There is a caring, loving, compassionate father waiting to lead you if you seek his guidance. This is the message. And I pray that the Holy Spirit will enlighten you, help you to understand this relationship. Now live with the understanding, with this faith, Today and always, he cares. God loves you, my brothers and sisters and dear friends. Cling on to him and walk with him. God bless you. Father, I pray for everyone who heard this meditation. May the Holy Spirit make it very real to us. And may we have the blessings and the help of the Holy Spirit to do the right thing of knowing you as our Heavenly Father and trust you always with all our needs and ourselves. In Jesus' name, God bless you. And from this garden, he was arrested, then he went to the cross and died for you. God bless you.